Empty rain, empty rain. We give glory to the Lord. He oh, we give glory to the Lord. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration to the Lord, he reigns. Adoration to the Lord, my God reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Adoration to the Lord, he reigns. Adoration to the Lord, my God reigns. Adoration to the Lord Jehovah reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Adoration to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to our God, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, my God reigns. We give glory to the Lord, Jehovah reigns. He reigns, he reigns in my life. Adoration to the Lord, he reigns. Oh, he reigns, he reigns in my family. Adoration to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. We give glory to the Lord, he reigns. When Jesus reigns. When Jesus reigns. King of Zion, Judas, Lion, reigns. Jesus reigns. Oh, you are the king of Zion, oh, Judas, Lion, way. oh, Jesus, way. we call you to reign in our midst today, Jesus, way. Father, we call you to reign, oh, in this fellowship today, Jesus, way. You are the king of Zion, O oh, Judas, Lion, reign, O oh, reign, O oh, Jesus, way. Oh, you are the king of TTW, O oh, Judas, Lion, reign, O oh, Jesus, way. Oh, when Jesus reigns, Father, today when Jesus reigns, the King of Zion, Judas, Lion, reigns, Jesus reigns. You are the king of Zion, oh, Judas, Lion, reigns. Way no Jesus way. For you are the king of Zion, oh, you are Judas Lion way. We say Jesus way. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Jesus. We exalt your name this morning. Father, we want to thank you. We ask you to have your way this morning. It's all about you, Jesus, and none about us. Take the stage this morning and teach us, Holy Ghost. We yield ourselves to you with hungry hearts, willing to receive from you. We pray that we'll have receptive heart this morning and that when you speak, we'll know you have spoken and we'll take it into action. Blessed be your holy name this morning. In Jesus' matchless name, we have worship and pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. I just want to welcome each and every one of us to the ladies' sheets. It's the third Monday in the month of July. And as always, we always have our ladies' sheets. 
I just want to welcome you. If you're joining us for the first time, you are very much welcome. We are delighted to have you. We pray that you just stick with us for the next one hour, 20 minutes or so, and we are sure you're going to be blessed. And for those of us who have been part of this assignment, I just want to say thank you, very big thank you for all your sacrifices you make to be here every Monday. We are so glad and grateful to have you. We are live on Facebook. Please go ahead and share the video. Go ahead and share the video. Patience is something that, as I said on the group chat, if I had my way, I wouldn't have said anything today. I just wish somebody would have spoken. Let me learn because I have a lot to learn when it comes to patience. But that's the way it is. Sometimes I just need to do what I need to do. So please go ahead and share the live video. The link will be shared on the WhatsApp group. So you can go ahead and share that on your status as well. Why you shared on the live, why you share the live video. So, praise the Lord. So this is the transforming woman, as I said earlier, and in short, it is called CTW. The scripture we have for this mandate is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, which says, But we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in the mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Can you check Facebook to see if it's okay? Just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What is TTW all about? This is a place where women gather regardless of their age, status, or denomination for fellowship to behold the face of our Master, Jesus Christ. And in the course of that, they evaluate themselves daily, not for condemnation, but for spiritual good. It is a place where women are trained to thrive, understand, understand time, season, and stand the gap in the place for themselves, family, and nation. We use the word woman as per the title of the gathering instead of women because it is a personalized decision to be made by every woman depending on how hungry she is in need of the master self. We gather for now every Monday to worship, share the word of God, and pray our way into our pre-designed destinies. It is a gathering of total surrender and a place where we have only one objective and no alternative, which is either Jesus or Jesus. Our mission is to gather to fellowship with the Holy Spirit and evaluate our lives daily for spiritual good. Our vision is to raise a generation of women who are passionate for God. They are conscious of their life in the secret. They are ready to fulfill purpose, enjoy marriage, and promote godly parenting. Our values are love, humility, compassion, self-control, giving, excellence, and sacrifice. So that said, we're going to go straight ahead to the main thing for the day. I'm going to go straight ahead to the main thing for the day, which we're talking about how to exercise patience, how to exercise patience. So I'm just going to try as much as possible not to talk a lot with the anticipation that we are going to contribute, including Kelly. Um, so <laughs> with that anticipation, I don't want to talk a lot because I actually want to learn a little bit too about patient from other people's perspective, maybe out of their experience when they are getting impatient, what they do. I have mine, but I might be able to incorporate certain things from others. So um, we'll just go straight ahead to what we have for the day. I always, like I always do, I would like to find out or define what is patient, what is patient. For the past two weeks, you know, this month has been the fruit of the spirit. That has been our theme. And we have been looking at about um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, which has been our measure or our anchor scripture. And we saw the fruit of the spirit that there were nine manifestations and patience was one of them. We all know that it is actually very, very, very difficult because when we talk about patience, we're talking about you finding yourself in a situation that is not favorable, something that is not sweet, something is not something you will not pray to behold. That's when you need patience, right? So you actually do not need patience in the good times. You need patience in the trial moments. You need patience in the time when things are not working out. Your expectations are not coming to realization. That is when you actually need patience. So we know it's really, really something that is hard. I just pray that as we talk about it, it will not just be the things we, we hear or we verbalize, because sometimes it's easier for us to talk, but we do not put those things into, into practice. It is important that consciously, every time we gather every Monday, we consciously try to practice the things we hear, consciously try to work on them. I mean, I remember there was something that happened, I don't know if it's this week or last week, and it kind of, you know, 
almost got me irritated because something we have been waiting on and then you know we keep calling every day they say okay tomorrow 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 and one day I, I just wanted to get maybe no today's monday so that should be early last week and i just thought about oh we are in the month of the fruit of the spirit and i said to god because something that you know it's like you know those sort of things you always say you have the right to be angry although there's nothing like that but you feel like it's so justified that if you explain to everybody they'll be like ah these people too they can be very funny so sometimes it's like you should lose your patience i remember we are in the month of the foot of the spirit and i just remember because i was almost i i was so angry in my spirit i just sat in the neighbor and said holy spirit please help me just help me and after about one hour i realized that that anger everything went down why because I put in efforts to practice the things we are we are actually teaching so you don't escalate your emotions praise the lord so what is what is what is um what is patience what is patience i have um a couple of definitions yeah you know normally we have always known and i think most people know that patience is waiting without complaint. So I think that's kind of the definition we most know that patient is waiting without complaint, without complaint. But I would like to talk about something else, you know, to add something to that definition. But before I add, I also have a definition that says patient is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble or suffering without getting angry or upset. I'll read that, read that again. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. The question is, we kind of know what patience is like. Maybe even not with the way we verbalize it or the way we define it, but we kind of have it in our mind what patience is all about. But the question is, let's say you actually you have an appointment or there's something you're supposed to meet with somebody and, you know, the person says, okay, let's meet at 10 o'clock and you are waiting for that person, right? And at 10 o'clock, the person is not there. You just sit and you're watching TV. Could that be that you are a patient person? Because I want us to start from that note, trying to understand deeply what patience is all about. Because I feel like sometimes we feel like being, um, being silent, kind of, if you just have a particular posture, it means you're a patient person. So from the example we gave, I'm waiting on somebody and the person is not there. We have to do something, it's very imperative. But then the person is not there and I decide to sit, maybe watch TV or maybe do something. Could that be that I'm a patient person? But just to go ahead and answer it while we are pondering on the question, there is a tendency that in such a situation, 98% of us in that situation, we are not patient. Though sometimes we cannot be, we are not verbalizing words because some people have different way of expressing their impatience. So though sometimes we might not be verbalizing the word, but then the fact that we sat on that particular posture does not make us patient, does not make us patient. The real definition of patient is the ability to endure it without complaining. So it's all about sometimes we may sit and we murmur in our heart, we grumble in our heart. Once you are grumbling in your heart, even if you don't verbalize it, that process when you're waiting and you're grumbling is still a sign to show that we are impatient. So it's not just all about our actions, it's all about our attitudes. It's all about the things we think inside and the way we express it. All of them in comprises of what it means for someone to be impatient. So some people, when they go through some seasons of their life, people around them may feel like, okay, they are impatient. But now when we, especially when we talk about our relationship with God, he that sees everything, you know, the thoughts we think about, how we grumble, how we murmur, how we, we disregard, we talk about something else, we feel like we just want to let it go. That is not a sign of being patient. It's a sign also of being impatient. Sometimes some of us too, you might just sit and say, okay, the person is not coming, but you discover that you are not sitting, you know, uprightly. You are just 
you know, that's a sign to show you are not talking, but your body movement, maybe every 30 seconds, how many of us have been expecting a visitor or you expect somebody you love and you are looking at the time you realize that every, you are watching movie, it looks like you're doing something, but every 30 seconds you go to the window and open. It's a sign of impatience. So it's all about sometimes our actions, our attitudes, and the things we think in our hearts. Some of us murmur in our hearts. So it's all about those things. And we, we I believe we are all children of God. Patience is something that cuts across, you know, even those who are business people, are leaders, and unbelievers. They know, even though they do not read the scriptures to know the fruit of the spirit and understand the manifestations. However, they know that it's a virtue that is needed. So we all need patience. We all need it. Some of us have it to an extent. Some of us, most of us need to work on our patience level. Some of us are actually, I don't want to say zero, but it's really, really right, right down there. You know, people will say, I don't take nonsense from people, are impatient people, and which will be seeing some few things today that I know that the Holy Ghost is going to bring it to us and help us to become better. So we all need patience. We all know that it's the fruit of the Spirit. And as we said, the fruit of the Spirit is something we consciously we consciously work on, not like the gift, right? I think we have said that over and over. So that means that we have a role to play. The Holy Ghost has a role to play, but there must be what? There must be cooperation between you and the Holy Spirit in order for you to actually get to the level where you have to get to. So if you actually try to do it to your, by yourself, you are going to fail because at one time your strength, your ability will fail you. So it's supposed to be a partnership. When you want to work in patience, you must have partnership and relationship with the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is going to help you. I think we kind of looked at that when we're looking at all the manifestations of the fruit of the spirit. So I'm not going to be, you know, emphasize a lot on that, but we must know that we have to be intentional about it. We must be intentional about work um, about manifesting patience. And I want to start with Psalms 37. I want us to look at something. I have a few scriptures I want us to look at. Let's look at Psalms 37. We'll read from verse 1 to 9. Psalms 37. The Bible says that, do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring to it to pass. I don't know if we're reading together with me. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. He says, rest in the Lord, verse 7, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret because of him who prospers in his way. You know, anyway, I'll explain that. Let me finish reading. Because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake what? Do not fret. It only causes harm. Women of God, are we listening? Verse 9, he says, For evil doers shall be cut off. But those who wait on the Lord, those who are patient, he says, You shall inherit the earth. Thank you for the scripture. When you read through this Psalms 37, you realize that the psalmist, it was telling us that we live in a generation where everything now, you know, with technology, everything seems to be going so fast. So when we get into a situation where there has to be a hold, it looks as if something is wrong with you. It looks as if things are very abnormal and it is not the agenda for God to go through long suffering. The generation has made it in such a way that you have to have everything at your disposal. When you want this particular thing, you have it at that time. But if you work with the economy of God, you will discover that long suffering is something you cannot. It is impossible to escape it. It is impossible, right? So when you read through the Psalms 37, the Bible is saying that don't look at when the evil doers, those who are not in Christ, don't look at the things they do. Don't look at their riches. Don't look at their blessings because these are the things that make us to be impatient. Everybody can get married. But I want to tell you how many people enjoy their marriage is what we are talking about. How many people are living, you know, their marriage is an assignment and they are doing what God has called them to do. Yes, everybody, you, you see the type of beauty and all the things and all of a sudden you become impatient. 
You compel the man to do certain things because another person who is not in Christ is doing it. And Psalm 37 is answering us that don't focus on those things because he understands that one of the reasons why we become impatient is because of the society. As we grow older, you discover that impatient is actually, you know, is actually going out. The virtue is no longer available. We don't have the patience to wait. We don't have the patience to wait for our timing because there's an appointed time. We're going to see that in the book of Habakkuk. It is written there. There's an appointed time for everybody. But we don't want to wait. We want to compare an appointed time of somebody else with our own appointed time. And the psalmist is telling us that there are people who prosper, but it's not of God. There are people who actually look like they get all what they, they got at their own timing. But the question is, how did they get it? It says, do not focus. It says, those who, those who get riches, those who get blessed, those who have everything they want at the same time, he said, they will soon expire. He said, but for those who wait on the Lord, he said, you shall inherit this earth. He didn't say heaven. He said earth. And when they talk about inheriting the earth, you inherit the goodness of this earth because there is good in the land. You inherit the goodness, you inherit the riches, you inherit the blessings, and the blessings of the Lord make it rich and does not add sorrow. With the blessing of the Lord, you don't need to cry because there will be no losses. But then the question is, are you going to wait? Because if there's no waiting, there is no manifestation. That's the truth about it. If you do it God's way. If you do it God's way. So we must understand, if, I think it kind of helped us. And I, I just want to talk about something because you'll be asking, why do, why is patient? Why does it matter? Why is it important for us to have patience as children of God? Why is it important? Why is it an important virtue? I mean, we, we kind of looked at it that the manifestations, you know, we looked last week, we looked at it that love is the greatest. We don't, I don't think that all of them, the other manifestations are in order, um, are in order of importance. However, virtue is something that, you know, it's, it's like, it's not like we don't need love every day. We need love every day. But long suffering may be something you experience for a period of time. Long suffering is not something you experience all your life. You may be experiencing seasonally as God is taking you to the next level. He'll give you tests. But then patience is something you need at all times. At all times. Because your level of patience may be eight. You get to associate and meet with people who have one as their level of patience. So you will need it at all times. So it's a virtue we must intentionally, intentionally practice, cultivate and grow in. Why does patience matter? Number one, patience is an act of humility. Patience is an act of humility. When we practice the act of patience, you help, you, you, you partnership with the Holy Ghost to become more patient in life. It shows that, you, in fact, when you become more patient, you become more humble. So you don't need to pray too much to be too humble. You just need to ask God to help you to be patient because as you are more patient, you become more humble. When you become impatient, you show that you try to exhibit the fact that, you know, you have the best plan. You have it all worked out. You know the best way to do it. It's a sign of impatience because if you look at it very well, impatience is all about our expectations. How do we become impatient? We have what we want to happen. At the age of 21, this is it. So we, we sat down as we're growing up. We define our life. We put dates. By 22 years, I'll be married. 23, one should try. By 25, I've given birth to all my children. By 28, I have a mansion. By 20, by 31. So you have all this plan out. All this plan out. And so when you get to 26, no man, you become impatient. Why? Because when we exhibit impatient, it kind of makes us, we begin to exhibit the attitude of we got it. We want it to work according to our standard. And so if it doesn't go according to our, um, our expectations, impatient comes in. However, when it doesn't go according to our expectations and then we now become patient, what makes us to become patient? It's because we believe that God is sovereignty. We believe that he exceeds our expectation. We come to a point that we believe that he knows beyond our own desires. We understand that he has a better plan for us. Though we desire this, we know that 
It's just going to be for a while because the one that God is preparing for you is more better than you. He knows the end from the beginning. So when you begin to go through trials in life and you begin to go through some hustles, you begin to go through some stumbling blocks. One of the things that will keep you patient is because you partnership with the Holy Spirit and you have the understanding and the revelation that the one who knows everything is in charge of your matter. And so as you become more patient, you become more humble. Because you know that it's not all about you. It's all about the mercy of God. You know that it's not all about how fast you can run. How much you can, maybe not even to an extent, how much you can pray. Those things are important. But you know that it's not all about the intensity of your prayer to an extent in court, so we don't get it wrong, right? What we're saying is no matter how you pray, you will need divine assistance. So patience help you to be humble. You come to a point, it's all about you, God. At your timing, I'm waiting for you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. You are the you are sovereignty over my life, sovereignty over the affairs of my life. So I will wait for you till my time of change we come. So patient help us as individuals. Help, patient help us as individuals to show that it's an act of humility. And I'll give us an example. You know, when you read first Samuel chapter 13, if I'm not making a mistake with the scripture, the, the story of Saul. Because when we talk about impatience, we're talking about you got it. I want it to be like that. And so I can't wait for him. I don't care. It's my, that's what happened to Saul. When the Bible tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 13, when Saul was at Gilgal, he was supposed to wait for Samuel to come in to offer the sacrifice, right? The Bible says he waited after he has waited for seven days. The people around him pressurized him. The Bible says the mountain he pressured, we cannot wait any longer. And if you will not do the sacrifice, we will leave. The Bible says Saul went ahead to offer the sacrifice, which was not supposed to do. And yesterday when I was preparing, the Holy Spirit said to me, the reason why Saul did what he did was because he knew he could offer the sacrifice. Child of God, let me ask you a question. If it was something, let's say I want to do, what thing can I say? Let's just, I want to make chin chin, for example. And I do not know the recipe to make chin chin. I am waiting for Kelly to come and teach me how to do it. She has been the one who has been appointed to show me how to do it. No matter how long Kelly waits, if I do not know, there is no magic I can do to start it. But because someone knew that he could. And so when we practice impatience, we come to a point we feel like we can take charge. I'm talking to us, talking to myself as well. Every time we want to become impatient, let's think, let this, if this is the only thing I'm going to say this morning and I give the opportunity for others, then you'll be fine. That when we exhibit the act of impatience, we are not humble. It means pride has taken over us. We have become proud. And you know what the Bible says with pride, it will bring you down. So when we want to become impatient, let's think about it. You are not the owner of your life. You are not the owner of the affairs of your life. There is a God who is sovereign over your affairs. And Saul forgot about it. So I said, ah, these people are very impatient. I don't know what's happening to somewhere because I can do it. After all, well, who does he think he is? Is it not because, is it because I was waiting for him? He think I cannot do it. He took over. If he didn't know how to sacrifice, he would have been more patient. So pride took over. The enemy gave him reasons. Is it, is it very hard? Just kill that ram. Just, you know, just do it. We must be careful. We must be careful. It's an act of humility, an act of surrender. Oh, Lord, I desire like this, but let your will be done. I will be patient until my time comes. Why do we need patience? Another reason. Patience is an act of service. <laughs> One thing I learned about impatience, which I'll talk about in another point, is that in most time when we exhibit impatience, I went ahead and I was just guilty. When we exhibit impatience, it's a sign to show that... Um, what work can I use? When we exhibit impatience, it's a, it's a sign to show that we are, we are. Mm, let me see, I wrote it somewhere. I'm not very sure where I wrote it. There's a particular word I want to use. Okay, it's a sign to show that we are selfish, which I don't, I will, I'll talk about it when I get to a particular point. It's a sign to show that you are selfish. Because if you discover, I look about, I'm very impatient sometimes when I'm driving. Let me give one of my weaknesses. I'm very, I know there are a lot of things. God is really helping me. If I look at it, I have been able to exhibit patience. But when it comes to driving, I discover that most often when we are driving, let me talk about myself, right? Especially, I want to leave the house early. 
Because if I leave the house 30 minutes before time, I don't think I'll be this impatient. So when I'm driving, sometimes 45, some of you driving, even if you're driving 43, eh, it irritates me sometimes. I'll be like, <laughs> this man just leave my phone. So I become impatient sometimes when I'm driving. But guess what? We're impatient. You know what I'm doing? I'm just being selfish. I'm being selfish. I do not care about the person driving behind me. But I'm so interested about the person driving in front of me because I want to have my way. Every time we exhibit patience, what do we do? It's an act of service. We kill our desire to let another person win. We kill our desire to let another person's desire go forward. It's an act of service. So when we become more patient, just like your relationship with your children, you can imagine how, how naughty they can be sometimes. Or those of us in the health field, when you deal with elderly people, when they're experiencing dementia, that's the highest place you can, you can, you can develop your patient. When somebody asks you one question 92 times within 30 minutes, it's not funny. And he expects you to answer them the same thing over and over. It's not funny. You discover that what are you do? You are serving that person. It's an act of service. So the more you begin to be patient with the elderly people, the more you are patient with the children, sometimes even your spouse. Sometimes I ask my husband, how many times will you ask me? Did you not ask me this question yesterday? <laughs> you asked me again today. I said, yeah. You know, the more you do that, you begin to serve them. Because it's easy for you to get irritated at that time. But what do you do when you bury that irritation? You don't allow that flesh to arrive at that moment. You have just served them. Though you are repeating yourself, you have allowed their own emotions to take over. Then you, you suppress your own. But when we become impatient, it's all about, I don't care about how you feel. I don't care if your car has a problem. I don't care if you are not feeling good. If, I were, if you just drive on the, on, 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 on the right side of the, of the lane, I don't see why you should be driving on the left side. It's for those who can drive with speed. So allow those of us who like driving with speed, you know, so a lot of things we say them is in me included is because I just want to have my way at all times and I don't want to serve others. So every time we participate, it's an act of service. The next reason why we need patience as individuals, as believers, is that patience is an act of faith. And we all know that, right? <laughs> Even if you read through the scriptures, you read through the scriptures. The Lord, there are so many scriptures, so many that tells us about patience. Now, you know, when we go through patience, it's all about between, you know, the season of patience is season between expectation and manifestation. It means that time in between. When that thing is not tangible, you can't see it. And when you go through the scriptures, all you see is promises. Promises is not what you eat. <laughs> promises, you can't take the promises like that. We know, we know the promise of God, they are so sure. But then though we say we, we say they are sure, we only say they are sure out of faith. Right? Because when you read the scripture, when God promises you that if you are patient, you will get reward. The reward does not come instantly. You just have to believe. That is where faith comes in. You are believing what you have not seen. You are believing what you don't even know if you come to pass, it will not come to pass. So every time we exhibit the attitude of being patient, what do we do? We walk on our faith. It's an act of faith. We tell God, I believe in you. We tell God, though it hurts, though it's hard for me, though it's challenging, this is what I'm going to, yet I will trust and I will wait on you. That's what Job did. He waited. I will wait on you. He had faith in the Lord that though everything has been taken away from him, his sheep, the cattle, the children, everything, his health. He said, I will wait for my appointed time. Why? He was able to activate his faith level, increase in his faith level. So why we need it? Impatient people rarely exhibit the, the, the virtual faith. If you are impatient, you can't because you won't even wait. So how will you... What is faith? You are believing God that what he has said, he has done. It is done already. You are just waiting for the manifestation. So it's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. When you recognize that God is the one that orders your step, when you believe it, you don't just read it, you know that truly everything happens according to his plan. It has pleased him for it to be like this. It has pleased you know, you believe, you become patient, even when sometimes, ah, the highest place I've learned patient more is in this ministry. I've learned some level of patience in this mission, and God is helping us day by day. Quickly, as I said, I don't want to take a lot of time. I want people to give me their own. I want to talk about 
what can we do? Remember the, the, the topic today is how can we exercise patience? So it's all about practicality. We're not just looking at scriptures. How can we? So it's a practical step. What can you do to be more patient? What can you do to build your patient level? I have some few points here I want to look at. The first thing I want to talk about what you can do, how you can exercise patience is to stay focused on your ultimate goal. Stay focused on your ultimate goal. If you want to exercise more patience. Now, we are women of the kingdom. We are children of God. We are not here accidentally. As a child of God, you understand that. Right? So beyond your own personal expectations, beyond your own personal plans, beyond your own desire, we all have a, an ultimate goal. Let's look at James chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. You have your vision, you have your assignment, you have your plans, but there's an ultimate goal. The Bible says, therefore, be patient, brethren, CTW, women, men. He said, be patient until the coming of the Lord. So if you are not yet dead, or if Jesus Christ has not come, patience is a virtue you will need daily. It's not something you say, oh, my patience is over. It's, it doesn't work like that if you are working with God. Therefore, Paul was teaching us that be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. So that is our ultimate goal. He says, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives what? Early and later rain. You also be patient. Establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is at hand. You know what Paul was teaching us? That we must be careful. You know, there are certain things when you start working with God. One of the things you do is when you meet impatient people, when you begin to meet some people who are just trying to push your button. When you have, as a child of God, when you have that ultimate goal, that's what, that's what is helping me. The ultimate goal is what directs your path. It's what adjusts your movement. You don't move by the things that happen. The things that happen around you are not the things that control you. What controls you is your ultimate assignment. One of them is to make heaven. Paul was saying that, brethren, be patient. So if you are not yet dead, you cannot, your patience level cannot be over until the coming of Jesus Christ. Remember, it is at the end that you, you they will bring all your works and they will try them. So because of somebody who is insensitive, if you are not careful, you will let go of your ultimate goal and focus on that person. You become impatient, trying to fight, trying to give back, trying to show them how powerful you are, trying to show them who you are, you have lost your goal. When you stay focused to the assignment, when you stay focused that you are a kingdom woman, you are a child of God, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how they come. It doesn't matter the, the, the strategy they use. Once you have a focus of who you are, who are you are being called to do, that guide, guides you. It helps you to remain patient. Before they do people see you eye test, when you get drunk in the diaspora, we know what they will do. They'll draw that line, put you a tiny line and they'll ask you to, to work on it. Why? They want you to follow that path. When you derail out of that path, they know you're drunk because if, you, if your eyes are clear and they put a path for you, you should be able to follow it. So just like somebody who has been given that test, as children of God, we have a very tiny path to walk on. You know, those who are outside, they can, they can dance, they can just get up in the morning and fight, fight in the afternoon, fight in the evening because their path is so broad. So they don't have the capacity to fall so long as we are still here, right? They can't fall. If you have a very big path, you cannot fall. But as somebody who is taking a GUI test, I mean, the road is broad, but there's a white line, a tiny line on the board where they're asking you to walk. So every time you go out of that line, you have failed the test. That is how we have been called as children of God. As we walk in this, and one of the things we must know is that there is a line. It takes those who are in him, those who have fellowship in him, to know that they are not permitted to go out of the line. So anything that happens that will take you out. So if there's somebody outside trying to put things, put words in your mouth, trying to irritate you and look at them, are they in the line? Are they along the ultimate purpose? Are they pursuing the same thing you're pursuing? If you forget about your ultimate purpose, you go out of the line, you cannot hold it, but be impatient. So one of the ways we can exercise patience is by looking and focusing on our ultimate goal. Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. Habakkuk chapter two, verse three. 
Habakkuk 2 verse 3. The Bible says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end he will speak. He will not lie. He cannot lie. Those, he said, though he tarries, wait for it, because it shall surely come to pass. Be patient. If God, if you have an assignment, if you, the God is what, is what, is what, is what helps you. Though it tarries, thank you for the scripture. Myself as an example, I could talk about it. In fact, when, when I started, when I started the assignment, dealing with women, we can understand how sometimes it may be, you know, it, it, it might have God has been working on me. I'm telling you, because normally you begin to look at it. It's because of Habakkuk chapter two, there is an assignment. That particular woman who is acting to you as if you don't know what you're doing, it was not there when you were told us. I mean, there's an assignment. There, there's a picture I have. There's a vision board I have. And every time I think about the vision board, every time I think about the assignment, every time I think about where I am going to, the things people throw on the way is not my focus because there is an ultimate purpose. There is a vision. The Bible says, do it carry. I must be patient. When I now leave that assignment and I begin to focus on the attitude of people, this person did not respond to me. This person did not greet me. This person did this. This person did not respond. I want to ask this 30 minutes, 30 seconds, because I'm human. You know, sometimes I want to think about it. But once the Holy Ghost comes, the ultimate purpose comes. I continue as if it never existed. Why? Because there is an ultimate purpose. The question, do you know your purpose? I'm not just talking, I started by talking about an ultimate purpose. I'm not even talking about your personal. Your personal comes after the ultimate. Do you know the ultimate purpose as a child of God? Do you know? Because that's what controls us. Before we talk, it controls us. I had, I remember, I don't know, is it tells, last week tells the, I had a, a, a misunderstanding also, and I was like, it was already past, is it past two or? Or to 12, no, maybe to 12, maybe like 11 45 p.m. And all of us were angry. I remember I wanted to get me up at one o'clock or two o'clock to pray. I was telling you, I beg, I want to sleep because I want to wake up and nap. But I could not sleep. At the end of the day, we end up sleeping around maybe that 12 30 I'm talking about because why? There is an ultimate purpose. I know as I know my name that I am not permitted eh, to go to bed if I've not sought it. But I, I told him it was before I will use an advantage of that situation. Three months, I will hold on to that thing. But I can't do it. Why? Because of my ultimate purpose. It has overshadowed my flesh. It has overshadowed my emotion. It has overshadowed my pride. I am no longer permitted because they've said, the you are lying. That ultimate purpose it has been said before every child of God. The next thing quickly, we must think before acting. If you want to become more patient, you have to think. I remember my husband always tell me over and over. I say, you yeah, are just talking to respond. He used to tell me, I'm talking to respond. I'm not talking to understand. And that's what happened to most of us. You discover that some of the reason why we are not patient or becoming patient is because we do not give an opportunity to understand first. Once the person starts talking, we want to give our point because we already have a premeditated answer respond and so it makes us to be impatient we are not patient enough to hear the other side of the story we are not patient enough to know what that person wants to tell us maybe the end of it will there on no we are not patient enough to hear hey as the person started no no wait wait, wait let me tell you first you know we are not patient so if we want to develop more patience we must develop the attitude to listen first and understand before we respond it helps us most often if you wait and hear to the end you now understand, oh, this person didn't intend it like this. But originally, it sounded this way. And it has saved you a lot emotionally because the devil, that thing, when you are emotionally hurt, it has a way place with you. It, it eats you up. If people, that's why there are a lot of people who might be angry with me, for example, and I don't know, you know, I have peace of mind and they don't have peace of mind because the more they see me, they get irritated. And it happens to us sometimes, especially if you have not cultivated this attitude to work with the Holy Spirit and make sure that you make your heart clear from every malice. If you have not cultivated it, you see it like fun to keep it, then they see a problem. So if we want to work on our patience, we must work on our way that we talk and respond. Proverbs chapter 15, we'll look at it. That means we must work to apply patience with our tongue. We must control it. And Proverbs 15, verse 1 to 2. The Bible says a soft answer turn, answer turn away what? But the harsh one stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses 
knowledge widely, but the mouth of fools pour forth foolishness. And who are fools? Why? It's those who talk harshly. You don't wait for your turn, or you don't wait to understand, or you don't wait for the other person to finish up. You discover it's just a sign to show you're impatient. We want to develop patience. You know, we start talking to our heart. Okay, just wait. Let him, let him, let him just, even if it's something you know, it doesn't make sense. You can develop patience by just, just allow him to finish talking. Just allow him. You are, you are working on your patience level. And he's talking foolishness. And let him just finish talking. When he finish talking, okay, you now know how you go ahead. You discover that if you wait till that person, if you are able to wait, you have developed some level of patience. Even the way you respond will become different. Sometimes you just choose to be silent. But if you want, the Bible says a foolish person wants to give their answer. Now, 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 foolish people. You know this foolishness, you don't have to be, you don't have to walk naked on the way before they say you are foolish. No, no, no. Most of us, beautiful makeups, we are foolish. When it comes to God's agenda, we are foolish. Heaven looks on at us to be foolish. So we will talk so fast. We want to give our opinion so fast. Our point must be heard so fast. They say we are foolish. It's a definition of the scripture. It's a definition of the scripture. So we must think before we act. It's important. It helps us to build our patience. Maybe before the person even finished talking, the Holy Ghost might have dealt with you. You know, you'd have calmed down. You say, okay, what do you have to say? You say, I don't have anything to say. Not because you don't want to say anything, but you are really calm. Why? Because you waited a little while. You waited a little while, right? And I want to say another thing before I go to the next point. The third thing for me that can help you to become more patient, to exercise patience, is when you give excuse on behalf of others. I learned this some years ago. I'm trying. I'm not yet there, but I know sometimes I learn to do it. Give excuse on behalf of others. Now, what do I mean by that? For example, you know, we women, we can be very dramatic, very, we try to look at the attitude of everybody. We pick out little, little things. We look at body uh, um, uh, 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 um, postures. We pick out uh, 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 um, their attitude, the way they behave, their facial. So we are very sensitive to details. Even I remember I was talking to my daughter about one month ago. She was like, Mama, it looks as if you are, you." she said to me, Mama, don't you want, it, was, it wasn't a video call, it was an audio call, but truly that morning I was just kind of very calm, you know, I wasn't really, I kind of, she knows the way I talk to her, and she was like, Mama, are you angry with me? I said, no. Then she said, um, it looks like you don't want to talk to me, and I immediately adjusted. I said, why? She said, you don't sound like you are happy. That's the, that's the statement she used. She said, you don't sound like you are happy to talk to me, and I was like, wow, even a little girl could sense it. No, I wasn't angry talking. I wasn't angry with her. But that morning, I was not just, the way I was talking to her, I was not just, uh, when I say in the mood, there was just that, there was just that, oh, wow, that morning. And she could sense it. What I'm saying is, we women are very, she could sense it that something is wrong with my mom. She said, it looks like you're not happy to talk to me. And I said, well, why did you say so? I said, no, I'm happy to talk to you. And I adjusted immediately. And I went back to the way I was supposed to do it. What am I saying? We must, if you want to become patient and work with God, one of the things you must do is, whether you are pretending, in fact, if you are, it, it helps you. It's not for those people. You know, make excuses on their behalf. For example, we have a lot of women. Ah, this person, she did not greet me. Now, when somebody you were expecting to greet did not, did not greet you, do you know the, what you can do for you to be more patient and for you to have peace of mind and for you to be mentally stable to do this assignment of God? Just pretend. If I give yourself the excuse, maybe she did not see me. Though you saw her eyes widely open, in fact, she even looked at you, just say to yourself, maybe she did not see me. Do you know why? You are saying that for you to work with God. You know, there's so many things. Make excuse on behalf of your husband. Make excuse on behalf of your children. Sometimes make excuse on behalf of people who are mean. If they knew better, they would have treated you better. Maybe they don't just know. Maybe they are ignorant. Maybe they need to get to that level. You have gone a little bit. Maybe they have not gone. Sometimes make excuses on their behalf. They don't know that you made excuses on behalf of them. They don't know. You are doing it for your soul. You are doing it for yourself. You are doing it for your work with God, your relationship with God. At the end of the day, these are the things that will count. Make excuses. They didn't see me. They didn't quit me because, oh, maybe they have something that is just going on with them today. Even though nothing, maybe some of them is just their attitude. They just like to be mean. Make excuses on behalf of them. It will give you peace of mind. You'll become more patient. I've been trying it, though. I've been trying it. 
I began of a story I told her, I consciously did that thing, consciously. Because I didn't want to say, hey, she didn't tell me about it. Hey, she didn't tell me about it. There might be a reason why she didn't tell me. But I pretended as if there was no reason why she didn't tell me. And I went ahead to do what I was supposed to do. I just made an excuse on behalf of her, so I will not keep it honest. I just made an excuse on behalf of that, my friend. I made an excuse. It looked like everything looked like she was acting up in a certain way. I, I, I chose not to follow that up. I just said, you know, she, she didn't just want to tell me. But I cannot pretend I've not heard about it. I made an excuse and I made a step. Make excuse on behalf of people. It's going to help you. It's going to help you. You have peace of mind. You have peace of mind. The next thing quickly, I want to finish at 11 o'clock so people will talk. The next thing quickly, how can I exercise patience? Concentrate on giving. How can I be more patient? Concentrate on giving. It has been realized that when you concentrate on giving, it has been realized that impatience most of times is rooted in selfishness. I remember talking about it and I said, I will repeat it again. Impatience is rooted in selfishness. So self-centeredness, if you look at it, when you are too, too impatient, because all of us at some level become impatient. I'm not saying we all know I have my own areas I have to work on. So all of us at some level, but when you are too impatient, you are a selfish person. You are very self-centered when you are too impatient. So how can you become more patient? Start giving, start giving. Serve humanity, serve people. Forget about yourself, start giving to people. When you start giving to people, you become more patient. When you start giving to people, you will become more patient. The Bible says, you know, look for ways to give your time. Before I go to that scripture, look for ways to give your time to people, efforts to others. It makes you to become more patient. Now you will no longer be thinking about yourself, self, 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 self. It's okay, if I'm driving now, I can begin to think, well, though that person is driving slowly. Now this, this, this thing will come to my mind. Marian, when you are too impatient, means you're selfish. What if that person, as long as I'm going to an important place, let me also make an excuse on behalf of that person by saying that, oh, that person too has somewhere important to go. I'm not the only person who wants to go to an important place. When we get to Walmart, when we get to the store, I remember one day, you know, I wanted to get, I was going for a party, a baby shower, and I was late and I wanted to get a gift. I went there and the queue was so long. I was, I remember standing. There was just like four people. I was like this. I actually dancing without music because I was impatient. I wanted to be the first person on the queue. Why? Because I did I was so selfish, not thinking that those other people ahead of me too might have something very important as I do. So impatient make us to become very selfish and self-centered. We feel like it is only us. It is all about me, my importance, my emergency, my thing, my thing. You can't for once don't think, okay, this other person too needs, needs something or has something that is important. So when you start giving your time, when you start serving humanity, when you start serving people, oh, it's okay, it's okay. You, you know, you can go ahead of me. So, so you can study, go to the shop. Ask somebody, sometimes I do, sometimes people do it for me. If you see you have a bunch of things, you can participate. You are the fourth person. When you see somebody that just got one item, say, can you go ahead of me? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You are, what are you doing? You are serving them. You are giving out time. You are giving your space. You are giving your own, your own turn to another person. You become more patient when you start doing that. You can ask the second person, oh, you discover this person has just two items. You have 25. You know, sometimes for that person to wait for you to check out, say, okay, oh, you have just two things, you know, just go ahead of me. What are you doing? You are serving. You are giving your time. You are giving your place. Sometimes it shouldn't be all about you. Though it might not be convenient, participation by giving your time. Let's look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 14. The Bible says, now we exhort you, brethren, one those who are, is that 514? One those who are unruly, comfort, comfort the faint hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. I don't know if that verse 15, we go, look for verse 15 and put it up, but let me continue what I'm saying. The Bible says what? Be patient with everybody. You know why the scripture says so? Now, it didn't say be patient with those who are good. He didn't say be patient with those who have good attitudes, those who do. Mm -hmm. He said be patient with everybody. It means, you know, there are some people that is difficult to be patient with them. There are some people, it's difficult. When you see the verse 15, I, I don't know if that's the best. I want to say something. There are some people, it's difficult to, to be patient with them. 
Let me see what verse 15. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourself and for all. Okay, that's I don't think that's the scripture I was looking for. Thank you. Now, there's some people that is difficult to be patient with. Some people just have attitudinal problems. Some people, you know, according to my husband, sometimes he says that when you work with your cutters, you know, the day that they are nice, you just know that they have they are, they are, they are in good relationship with their boyfriends. The day that they are mean, you just know that they had a problem with their boyfriend because some of them don't know how to control their emotions. So when they come to work and they are acting up, just know that you are just the, 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 the tool they are using to, 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 to release their anger. What am I saying? There are some people who are actually so difficult to deal with. But when you are a kingdom woman, when you have that ultimate goal we talk about, what helps you is that you know that the scripture is asking us to be patient with all people. Those who are not good enough, let me put it in that way, those who are mean, those who have attitudinal problems, those who have just, they look as if they have been wired from hell specifically for your sake. It's just as if they designed them for you. You have to be patient with all those people. Those who have offended you, those who have hurt you, we must be patient. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. We must learn to overlook shortcomings of others. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, therefore, as the elect of God, who are the elect? We are the elect of God. You are the elect, I'm the elect. Holy and beloved. He said, put on tender mercies. When you say put on, there's a consciousness. Put on, you deliberately take something and put it on. You say you should wear. So virtue is something you have to wear. Peace and sorry, patience is something you must wear. You can't, it's when you are leaving your house, if you keep your garment of patience, it will be, it will not be an easy thing. If you look at the head, it says a character of a new man. You are a new woman. You are no longer the person you used to be. When you get up in the morning before you go to work, wear the garments of uh, patience. You have to wear it like a cloth. He said, put it on. Tender mercies, kindness, humility. These things were not born with them. Meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. He says, if anyone has a complaint against one another, even as Christ forgave us. So Christ is our role model. As you also must do, wear patience as a garment before you leave the house. We all know in marriage, you need two garments or three garments because you don't just need a regular garment in marriage for you. You need a thicker garment. That one that, when that thing comes, it will not affect you. The type of garment you wear during winter in New York, that's the kind of garment you need for patience. So we must wear it. God is patient with us. For that sake, we should be able to be patient with others. Another thing I just want to talk about, I have one more minute, but let me just say it, is, let me see, I have two points. Okay, let me just talk about this fourth one. When people are giving their own illustrations, if there's time, I'll talk about the fifth one, and I'm sure somebody else will talk about it, you know, is to talk out our tensions. It should talk out our attention. You discover that when you look at, your, when you look at our life, you discover that most of the things we become impatient about, the conflicts we have with people, friends, spouses, children, and all the rest, you discover that sometimes those things we see them to be like annoying to us. It's not annoying to everybody. Sometimes when I see, I'm sure when my, I'm angry, sometimes my husband will be like, he doesn't see the sense. Many times I don't see the sense. Sometimes I'm angry for something. I can't understand why he's angry because for me, it doesn't make sense. So it's the same thing. We must come to understand that things that make us annoying may not be annoying for everybody. And at the end of the day, most often, the things that make us to be impatient, is, it comes from a result of our viewpoints, the way we view things, the way we see things. It's not actually the way it is supposed to be. It's just the way we view things. So the, it depends on the lenses you have on. It, is, it is, depends on the glasses you are putting on. If you are putting the judgmental glasses, you see things differently. The way we view things. For example, when we talk, when I talk about um, and talk out tensions or work out something that annoys you, right? Because we are human beings, we must understand sometimes we hurt people, we cross the line, all the rest. For example, let's say your husband is snoring. He's a snoring time. Most of us women can become very impatient without snoring. In fact, for some people, it can even lead to divorce. That's how impatient we can become. Now, you do not even know that the thing you are getting impatient about and you're angry, that person who is doing that thing to you might not be aware that they are annoying you. So how can you grow your patience? Most often is to, is to work out those things that create tension in you. Don't be silent. Don't assume that the person knows it. As a matter of fact, the example I'm giving snoring. When you snore, you don't even know you're snoring. 
they have to tell you you are snoring for you to know you are snoring. You don't know you are snoring. Sometimes it's just the posture you sleep. For those who did science, they'll tell us maybe it's, well, I don't know, the, but there are some reasons why some people snore. It's something that is actually, I don't know if it's beyond their control. It's not something they plan it. So it can, you can really become irritated when you go married to this man. Say, ah, you don't know that this is a left off. This is the way he snows. It's as if you are in church because it's as if they are just doing piano band and everything together. His snoring is so intensified in such a way that you can't stand it. You discover that you are impatient. And then how can you exercise it now? You can do it by working it out. You want to talk to him. You want to let him know, oh, this is what he does. You know, he might not know about it. And the way you present it to matters, that's what helps to build your patient. When you do that now, he might not start looking. You know, it has all of this comes back to your mind. Consciously, this is what my wife complained about it. I want to make her happy. It's not about me. So you try to, he tries to do some of the things he's supposed to do as early as possible, not to get too exhausted. If you get too exhausted, sometimes you can't help him, but to snore. And then sometimes work on his mind before you go to bed. Okay, I'm going to work on this. I'm going to make sure I sleep. You know, you want to find some people, my husband cannot sleep with two pillows. I use two pillows. He uses one pillow because according to him, he doesn't sleep too well with one pillow. So if you sleep, the wrong posture will make you to snore. So when you walk it out to people, let people know. Let them understand. Don't just bottle it up, bottle it up. You become impatient in your spirit. And one day what happens is that it bursts out. You act up like a mad woman. You act up as if you have never been in church. Why? Because you did not work out your tensions. You not bring it to the to 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 to, to, the, to that person as okay. This is what is happening. This is what is happening. Most often, these people do not. They are unaware that they are causing some tension to you. Hallelujah. So make them see it. Romans chapter twelve verse eighteen. Romans chapter twelve verse eighteen. Let's see that last scripture. Romans twelve verse eighteen. Went down to our technical. Technical department lady, she's doing great. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank you so much. If it is possible, as much as it depends on you, sisters, as much as it depends on you, live peaceable with all men, not with some men, not with beautiful ones, not with those who have. If you know the Bible, God is so intelligent and intentional with all men. You know it's not easy to live with all men, but the Bible says, live peaceable. Some people will not be at peace with you, but make sure you are at peace with all men. I want to give an opportunity. Tell me about yourself. Tell me what you think. How can we exercise patience? I want to learn. How can we exercise patience? The floor is open. And if you're on social media, you have a contribution, you can go ahead and, and text your contribution. I always watch it and I'll see your comment. I'll read it for others to, 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 to get it. How can we become more patient and exercise patient? I want to hear your contributions. Good morning. Good morning, sister. Yes, please. I'm sorry. I just I'm kind of <laughs> a little bit impatient because <laughs> I have to go somewhere. So I'm just gonna talk and before I go, yeah. So um my own points um how to exercise patient. I would like to um talk from my own um experiences. I love to bring my experiences, not because I like to put myself out there, but I, you know, sometimes it's better to, you know, be raw and let people understand that this thing, you know, we all face it. I'm one of those people that I used to be very, very impatient. Even now, God is still working on me. So it's not been easy. Like growing up, um, I remember my grandmother would tell me, you know, when I go to ask something from her and she would like, okay, you know, you did this, you know, she'll bring all those things you did and all that. And I get angry. And I'm that person, when I go to ask one time, if you don't give it to me, I will just go. I will never ask again. So she never liked that attitude because comparing with the other children, they will keep up asking grandma, please give us this, please. Even no matter how she shouts, she'll give it to them. But me, when I ask her one time and she doesn't give it to me, I'll be impatient, I'll leave. That's me growing up. I used to be like that, you know. And she kept doing that. She kept saying that, oh, I'm too proud. And I didn't see it that way until now. And then when I start looking back, I saw it as pride. You know, the Bible says, um, Matthew 7, 7, right? When he says, um, seek or ask, there's a version that says, keep asking. Yeah. The door will be, will, be, will be given to you. Keep knocking, the door will be open and keep seeking and you will find. 
And that's the attitude that God wants us to, um, to, um, to exercise when we are you know, talking about patience. Sometimes when we say patience, it doesn't mean we keep quiet, be silent and do nothing. You know, especially when you say, oh, I've gone to God one time. I asked God about this thing. God says, okay, be patient. I'll give it to you. Doesn't mean you can bring it back to God to pray. Now it's the posture of your heart. How do you go to pray? There's something the Lord showed me in um, Psalms, Psalms 40. Psalms 40 verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. That, that Just that one verse, he said, I waited patiently, and he inclined. And heard my cry. It means the man was not silent. The man was talking to God. He kept, uh, uh, David kept asking, get, he kept crying out to God to come and help him. There is to deliver him out of that horrible people, out of that uh, miry clay situation. The Bible says, you know, he delivered me out of the miry clay, out of that horrible people. So a miry clay might be a situation where there is a delay because a miry clay is a, a slippery situation. It's like you're going forward you're coming backward yeah your legs cannot come out one time i said about something like for those that come from africa we say potter potter like the moth. you you know you go forward you come back you go forward you come back. so it's like a delay that has happened in his life and he was in that position where he was crying out to god the bible says he said, you waited patiently for god to deliver him waiting patiently did not mean that he was silent he was not silent. So as women of God, even when we go to God in prayers and ask God for something, God say, I'm going to do it for you. It doesn't mean we stop praying. The reason why you go back to God and keep praying for that situation is not because you don't trust God. He's telling him that God, you see, I don't have any power on my own. I still rely on you because if you don't come in this situation, I don't know what I would do. So it's a, a, a level of a dependence on God. It's a level of, 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 of trust in God. So keep asking. I mean, keep asking him so that, oh, Father, even though, because I know when I go to God, when I come back out of my prayer, I don't see, I'm not the same. Is he turns my inside, my heart changes. You see that patient we are talking about. Most of the time, he are impatient is the flesh. So when you go before God, trust me, the flesh has to drop. And yeah. before you know, you you start to see patience, and you, you become patient with your own self, patient with other people. I used to be a person that I give. I'm a planner. That's me. Before today, now I already plan what I'm doing next week. In fact, by the time I get, I have to do this, do this. So I used to be like that. I will plan, I will say by this time, the man talk about it. I said by this time, 30 years old, I'll be married. I have these kids. And then it came to pass, it's not happening. Now I come to realize that sometimes in life, they are detours. Sometimes in life, you go left, you go right. There's sometimes that God begins to reroute you in his own way. It's not yeah. always our way. Sometimes like you have to be patient with the process that's something i want to talk about process process in the sense that what god might be taking you through a process james one says what it says count it all joy when you go through various trials because what your faith is being tested and that faith it will produce patience Exactly. So we don't like trials. And when you come to the Father, yeah, give me patience. God is going to give you trial. He's not going to give you patience. Patience is not going to come. He will give you suffering. He will give you trial for you to build that patience. So the Bible, we should count it all joy. Mm -hmm. So when trials come, don't be running away from me because if you run away from the trial then you will not exercise that patient mm -hmm. look, let's look at two scenarios i think you mentioned Saul, but i want to look it from a different angle let's look at Saul versus david vis-a-vis -vis. Saul and david Saul, the bible says what Saul was uh, he lost the father's donkey got lost he said oh go and look for it he took the servant and on his way god had already told samuel the prophet he says since israel demanded a king i'm going to give them a king and the bible says god rerouted until he went to samuel i'm going to cut it short and then samuel said oh this is the intention of god god want to make you a king and all that so he was put a king he didn't go through no process and you know what happened with his life the man became impatient. There was no process. He did not go through any training, nothing, whatever. He was mm -hmm. just pooping because he looked handsome. And God said, yeah, you look handsome in this. And remember even the time when they were calling Saul to come out, when uh, Samuel was about to announce him, the man went and hid himself. 
tough because he know mm, I can't. He was hiding. They had to push him out. Come out. You are the king. And the people were rejoicing because they saw the structure. They saw how good he looked. How this. And sometimes you might look all put together outside, but the inside is not ready. So sometimes God, he said, I want you to be patient in the process because you're not ready yet. And look at David. David was anointed at 17 years old. He only become a king at 40. That mm. is a long time. The man, before even when he defeated Goliath, he says, I have been doing, see, I defeated, I killed the bear, I killed the lion in the back in the wilderness, in the desert, when nobody knew him. And he was anointed, but he, he did not sit on that throne. He was fighting battles. Saul wanted to kill him. So the man went to the cave and hid himself. He did not say, oh, I'm going to feed. Well, God had they, they announced me. Because there's something that the Lord showed me. Because when he went to the they said, all oh, the people that were discontented with life, all those people that, in fact, the rebels, and all those kind of people, debtors and everything, they, they came to saw and they came 400. And the Bible said, he turned those men into great warriors. Mm -hmm. Somebody, if some, some of us would have said, ah, now that I have all these people have gone into, then let me go and deal with that saw. In fact, that seat that he's sitting on, it, it is my my bed right or it is my seat that God I know God called me for this thing even though you know that God has called you for a particular thing or God spoke to you there was a prophecy that released but maybe you have to go through the process maybe you have to be patient to go through that process so that when you get to that palace you are able to maintain that seat he was able to maintain that seat until he passed it over. Even God swore. He says, because of you, David, he says, your lineage will forever be king. Kings will come out from your lineage. It was not a Saul did not get go through no process. And guess what? Because of his impatience, he lost, he's lost his throne. He lost his throne. Something happened to me. I'm going to cut it short. Sorry for your time. But something happened. I remember I used to work. I did my... um. I used to I used to be a CNA, right? I did my um, my LPN. I was working with one lady, and this woman, you know, she the woman I was taking care of, she really took care of me. She was so good to me at that time, and I was going to school, so it was not easy. I was going back and forth, go to school, go to work, and it was not easy. But this woman was very understanding and all that. And that season, I, I always I said, God, thank you for using this old this old woman to you know be a blessing to me. I didn't see that way, and now. I got my license as a nurse, as the LPN, I got my license, right? And now I'm looking at, okay, the, this, how much are they even paying me? You know, and anytime the woman said something, I get agitated, I get angry, and I said, you know, like, please, you know, I don't even care about this job, you know? After all, I have my license now, you know, you can look for someone because she was like, I'll look for someone. I said, yes, go ahead, go ahead. As I was talking, oh my God, I remember that day. I was so, like, inside, I was so angry, like, Oh God, I deserve this. Sometimes we say, Oh, I deserve this. Oh, I deserve. Mm -mm, you don't deserve that if God does not give it to you. And I remember when I spoke to her in the living room, as I went into the, the bathroom, the Lord spoke to me. It was so loud. And he says, Check your attitude. And the Lord told me, He says, Your attitude will determine your altitude. He said, I cannot take you anywhere if you don't check that attitude. And he told me, He said, If you are not faithful with little, I cannot give you more. I, in fact, I I lifted up my hands and I said, God, I am sorry. Forgive me. What am I saying? So in the process of saying, I want to be patient, you need to check your attitude. What is going inside? You can say, oh, I'm silent. I'm not saying anything. But inside your heart, your heart is grumbling. Your heart is murmuring. And you're telling God, I deserve this. I've been seeking you. Look at this person. Now we start comparing people. Look at this person that does not even seek you. And now we just read a scripture. He said, don't look at, don't fret at the, the you know, one and unbeliever or a, a unrighteous person is being prospering. And don't fret, wait on God. And something I, I wrote down for how to uh, 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 exercise, have the, 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 have gratitude. Thank God for the little you have. Thank God for the life you have. Thank God for what you have. That is how you, you exercise patience. You have to have that gratitude. Say, Father, even though I, I, I want that house, but you know, I thank you that I have a shelter over me. See, I have this house. I'm able to pay my rent. And even when you're even asking God, you want to go to the next, how are you even taking care of another man's thing? The house that you're renting. 
And sometimes God, sometimes we live in a house that something God, God was talking to me because we say, oh, I just want to move out of here and go to the next place. And God is saying, but the house I've even given you, you have not taken care of it. See, you mess it. You tore the carpet. You're putting paint everywhere because it's not your property. If you cannot take care of somebody, so why are you rushing to go, to go and own your own? Who will give you your own if you don't know how to take care of somebody's own? And you have you on a job. You're being disconnected. Oh, they treat me bad. Oh, you know, to hell with them. Oh, this. You will say those things, right? I was like that. I, I get angry. I even brought it as prayer point. I lifted up the, the company. I remember one day. And I brought scriptures. I was praying. I was, you know, I was like, God. You know, I work, I work for these people and they are not paying me well. They are using me. I was just angry and I'm praying. And after I prayed, God just looked at me. God told me, you know what he told me? He said, I want you to pray for them. Then let them prosper. I said, what? <laughs> yeah, God. I said, what are you talking about? I'm praying that they should give me my, what I'm due. And you are telling me to pray. And I have to learn to be patient and not have it my way. And you don't even know the testimony will come for another day. What God did after I obeyed him and I began to pray, what God did when, when you talk about restoration, but that is for another day. And the second thing to round it up here, the second thing I talk about gratitude or content, be content. The Bible said in First Timothy 6 verse 6, you said godliness with contentment is great gain. Yes. And that's something the Lord spoke to me some years back. Me just waking up from sleep one day and I heard in my ear, Godliness with container with great gain. And I did not even know the speech. I asked, well, Google, what scripture is that? I didn't have a whole thing I wrote down. And I began to repent because I, I was not saying it, but my inside were dissatisfied. I was dissatisfied. I was impatient in me. And I, and I began to say, Father, forgive me. Help me to be content in this season. Help me to be content. And the last thing I would say is that learn from others. Be gracious to others. Be gracious to the people around you. Learn. I think Maria has already said, spoken that one. Learn from others. My husband is a very patient person, but I'm the opposite. And I'm, I'm learning to be learning from him. Because I, I always see that, I always argue with him all the time. Arguing, arguing. But later on, I realized that actually he was right. And now I'm, you know, it's like, oh, oh, now I cannot say anything again because I will argue like this is my point. It has to be like this. It has to. So I'm kind of learning to, you know, learn from others, learn the attitude they put, learn from the women around you. Thank you so much. Sorry for taking your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That was amazing. That was amazing. We are live. Please don't forget. Ah, if you're on Zoom, you have not shared me. I don't understand this is the women, but that's fine. Go ahead and share the video and we we'll like to hear another contribution from somebody else. Thank you, Dr. Martin. Good morning, sisters. Good morning. Um, I think I think I just wanted to share um, from my own experience. I know that um, I think naturally, you know, to an extent, the way women are wired is different. You know, if you if we if we go back to the book of Genesis and um, look at the life of Eve, you know, look at the story of Eve and Adam. And if you really look at it, I think it was out of impatience, you know, that Eve caused Adam to sin. She did not, she did not ever think, you know, that, or maybe I, I think it was, it did not occur to her as a woman to believe in God, you know, than what she was seeing. You know, God has spoken to them. God had told them that he would take care of them. God had told them not to eat from the, a particular tree. God had told them, you know, the plans that he had for them. But I think it was out of impatience that she caused her husband to sin, you know, because she actually, you know, it, it, we read, you know, or we learned that um, she was anxious for knowledge. She was anxious for you know, to eat from the tree of life so that she can know, you know, it's more like she wants to know what tomorrow holds. She wants, she wants to go ahead of God and it cost them their life. It cost them eternity, it cost them death, you know, because uh, man would have lived forever. So sometimes I, I feel like when we learn, when we look at the stories of people in the past, when we look at, I think uh, sometime back, we, looked, we, we talked about Moses, you know, and um, how 
you know, his anger caused him not to enter the promised land. I mean, sometimes when we look at these scary situations with even the prophets of God, the men of God, or people that God has worked with, when we looked at some of the things that impatient caused them, I think sometimes it should also help us to retrace our steps. It should also caution us and, um, you know, help us not to want to lose our place with God. Um, also, and I think also that um, if, you, if we look at it, the world around us, you know, wants us to be impatient. The worldliness, the, the evil around us, let me say the worldliness of the world, you know, wants us to be impatient because impatient comes from the evil one. It comes from Satan. Satan wants you to go ahead of God. Satan wants you to disobey God. Satan wants you to not to acknowledge God, you know. Satan wants us to, he says God's glory will come to him alone and alone and God will take glory in every situation because he created the world and he made it and he knows that it is good. He made everything in it and in his own time, you know, he would he prospers the world. So for me, I feel like, you know, the, 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 the evil one is the one that wants us to disobey God, go ahead of God, want to take glory for our own self, you know, and not give God the glory. And, and that's why sometimes impatience, you know, gives birth to a lot of mess, you know. Sometimes when we lose our anger and something happens, we feel ashamed, you know. At that time, your eyes are open. You, you see that you... You, you realize that you, you've become, I mean, like you've embarrassed yourself. You know, sometimes you do some things in impatience and it, it just does not sit right, you know. And so for me, I, I feel like um, a lot of times, you know, maybe we, we allow the world to dictate to us um, the expectations of, of the world. Rather, I think as, as Christians, we should, we should, um, care about the expectations of God. What does God want? What does God expect of me? What is the purpose of God in my life? You know, I, 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 I've, I've come in contact with a woman, you know, who told who shared her story with me. She told me, I got married at the age of 25. And, you know, she got married at, at the, an early age. According to the world, they tell you, oh, go get married early so that you can have your, you know, your biological clock ticks. So you can have your kids early and stuff. And she said, well, I did what the world um, expected for any woman. I think she's even got married at the age of 24. Until today, she doesn't have any child. She's about 50 something. And she said, look, it's not what we do. It's not the efforts that we put in. You know, some people, yes, it works for them. You know, God just, you know, and we are instruments in the house of God. God wants us, when God wants to use us the way he wants to use us. And so, um, I've, I mean, and the reason why I'm saying this is because especially as women, um, the world is the one that pushes that expectation to us. Sometimes they can come from parents. I've seen parents or grandparents who have raised women who have said, oh, go get married early, you know, so that you can remove this poverty from the family so that you can be the one to liberate the family so that you can be the one to, you know, bring a good husband or a rich man or things like that. Or go get married so that you can start having kids early. I've, I've seen people who got married early and they don't have children and they didn't have children. Personally, for me, I mean, I've seen where my doctor has said, oh, you know, now that you are aged, you, you, can you imagine somebody that's supposed to give you hope? <laughs> that she's your hope. Do you understand? So can you imagine that? The, the, um, you know, Paul says that we are in the world, but we are not of the world. When you call yourself a Christian, when you, when you, when you decide to walk with God, just decide, just know that. There's going to be a lot of trials, a lot of tribulation, a lot of things that God wants to use you. And God wants to use those situations to glorify himself in your life. So when you become a Christian, people are going to say awful things. People are going to say, I mean, last, let me, last week, my, one of my cousins had a baby and, you know, there was, she had a baby adoring. And I've had a woman come in to tell me that, ah, yeah, you too, you know? The world is the one that will push you. The world is the one that would. Can you imagine the world wants to even cause you to be sad over what they even know nothing about? Can you imagine you 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 can't create the person. You didn't create the person. You there's nothing you can really do to change anybody's situation. God is the one that enables every single thing that happens in the world. And can you imagine your doctor that's supposed to be giving you ah. 
They tell you all kinds of things that can happen. You know, when a woman starts giving birth at a late age, the, the, the child can have this kind of syndrome. The child can have that kind of syndrome. You know, when you're when a woman is age, it's more difficult to have kids. It's more difficult to get there. They will even tell you how the chromosome, all the eggs. It, my doctor has told me before that when a woman is at this age, most of most, can you imagine saying most of the eggs in your ovum are bad at this age. <laughs> so they have to select. I said, how, how, I, you know, that day I said, look, I'm not going anywhere. I want us to talk, you know? And I said, it, you know, because for me, I feel like sometimes we allow the world to give, so, give us something. We take it home and we start working on it. So then I said, no, no, what do you mean? Who told you? I said, sometimes you tell it to people that want to hear it and people, well, if you're talking to Jeanette Jackson, when she had a child at 50, how many doctors told her? Because you want the money. You know, they want the money. They want you to be in a hurry. They want you to come quickly. They want you to make decisions so that they can gain from it. And that's what the world does. The world wants to plunge those things in your heart. You start doubting God. You start doubting yourself. You start fighting with your spouse. You know, and you know, I, I like what uh, Gladys, my husband is so patient. When you tell him that, this door is locked to so go and turn around 20 kilometers. My husband will just leave. Me, I'll wait and say, why did you let us come the, all the way to this place? Why did you tell us from gate A that gate B is not open? My husband will just be looking at me like, if, like they said, go and turn. And he will be entering inside the car and going and say, you, you know, he's like, do you want to stand there? You know, and that's why I said, if you have people in your life that you can learn patience and you're not learning patience from, you're going to lose it. Because yeah. if Eve had learned from Adam, Adam that has been sleeping in garden for how many years before they made her? Adam that saw fruit that he didn't eat. Adam mm -hmm. has been there working with the animals. Adam has been working with God. And you just brought your impatience to cause a whole generation that God has okay. made to suffer. Wow. So sometimes when we see what impatience would do, I think so. it should cause us to retrace ourselves and say, look, I'm done with it. If this is the purpose of God in my life, let it be. You know, this morning, my husband has been out of town, at, you know, on Saturday, since Saturday, the weekend, you know, and he was, he was telling me, he said, oh, I'm so anxious. I'm, and for me, you know, for that, example, let me just give a quick, because of time, if you, if you want to make a contribution, please raise your hand. I know, so as you want to be, just go ahead, please. Please, please, just raise your hand. Let me see. I beg of you. Give your example, please. So I feel like impatience is something that, um, you know, as Christian women, we need to learn to just throw it away. And, you know, it says love covers over a multitude of sin. When you love someone, and that's why love, God is love. And God says love is what covers everything. You may not love the colleague that you are working with, but the love in you, the love of God in you, the, the love, the God love in you will allow you to overlook whatever they do and walk away. Yeah. So it's not because, you know, you might not be in love with the person, but when you, even as your spouse is snoring or maybe they're doing something, the love in you makes you overlook it. You know, makes you look at it from a different angle. Try and help the problem, you know, the person with the problem. Look, like I told you, I got a lot of, you know, expect more pillows to help my husband sleep right. Now he's sleeping better. I don't even hear it like before. I don't, I'm not irritated, you know, because you have love in you. So sometimes those things, get, you know, make you overlook some things. Like my son told me one day, he said, mommy, you're not going to get mad at what I did. I said, what do you, you want me to be getting mad every day? What do you think I'm going to look like? 10 years from now, when I'm getting mad every day, I don't want to be mad. I want to have, I want to be beautiful. I don't want to be angry, angry face, an angry bird. How does an angry bird look? They look scattered, they look like this, you know? I want to look pretty. I don't want to be angry, thank you. you know? Thank you, sister, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I do appreciate. I think we're running out of time, but I want one person else to contribute very briefly, very briefly. Amen. Hi, this is the story. So, um, Sister Mata <laughs> made me laugh <laughs> in regard to that illustration of Garden of Eden, but and one thing that when she was talking, the Holy Spirit told me to Adam too is impatient because if Adam has been working with God and he knows God very well, he could have told the woman, Madam, you have eaten, no? 
let you alone deal with me. I'm not going to eat. But he too, out of impatience, he could have waited on God for God to, to come and see what God would tell him. But he too, he took the apple. I guess it's love, that kind of stupid love where some of us who fall in the love, they say love is blind. No, love, love get eyes. Oh. <laughs> he will have used his senses, but because he's been there before her. So, but you know, he knows God. He knows the voice of God. He knows the commandment of God more than her. But I think he contributed to that too. So that is just by the way, that's what the Holy Spirit told me. So my own, what I wanted to talk about is about, you know, in the, in the book of Genesis um, 16, 16 verse two, you know how Sarah pushed her, her husband, Abraham, to go into Haggai because of lack of impatience. But also at the other hand, also him, Abraham himself contributed to that because even if that's just what God is, is, is telling me, like even if somebody is pushing you to do something, you, if you know your God, they know their God, because the Bible made us understand that they that know their God, they shall be strong and do exploit. So you should not weaver. You should not weave, I should not look to the right or to the left or be thinking about, okay, or even considering it. The moment you give thought to it, if somebody is telling you something wrong to do or take it, telling you to take the easiest way, the moment you give thought to it, the devil knows how to plant that seed in your heart. Mm -hmm. And before you know, the devil will keep bringing it to you. And then you start thinking, let me even think about this. Let me consider this. Is it right? And also mm -hmm. in the book of Ecclesiastes, I think, uh, and the, the Bible made us understand that whatever the Lord do, whatever the Lord do it, it abided forever. Nothing added to it and nothing taken out of it. So that is one thing we like. Once we know who we are in Christ Jesus, no matter how much the world have pushed us, to be honest with you, just like Sister Martha was saying that her doctor is telling her, remember all the doctors, they are not born again. Even the born again, even the ones that know God, Believe me, they go first of all, they think about science, they think about medical, they think about what they read, they read in, in a medical school before they will even think about God. So it takes you that you know your God and it takes also people, that's why it's good for people to surround themselves with godly people, people. godly people. people. So that even when you, you are thinking the devil is trying to mess with your mind, when you go to that person, that person will tell you, ah, ah, I cannot believe you are even thinking about this. You know, somebody that will, will, will tell you, no, I'm standing with you. I'm holding your hand. No, don't even think about that. This is the track. Somebody that will rebuke that devil out of you. Even when you are unconscious of that, you say, I rebuke this devil. So I just want to encourage us to be honest with you. We're all going through this. And believe me, believe me what Sister Martha says. Yes, we are of, in this world, but we are not of this world. I have heard a testimony of woman that, uh, 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 I think about uh, Oye Depot's church, the papa will be like about almost 70, the mama, because they've been married for 50 years. So couples that have been married for 60, for 50 years, they must be over 60 to kind of 70 years, but they have their child, their first child, naturally, no, no insemination, uh, artificial insemination, no, nothing, 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 nothing. Even in this Oklahoma, I know a woman that is 52 years old that had a, her twins, have her children. So whatever that the devil is telling us, whatever the world is telling us, we as the children of God, we need to stand upon the word of the Lord. What did the word say? Go back, always go back to the word. They go back to the word. That's the only way we will be able to be patient and word on God. Always, always go back to the word of God. That's just a word of encouragement to all of us. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think because of time, we are going to end here. Please, if there's any other contribution, we will go out of there. Sister Gloria, please. Okay, one minute. Just give us one minute. Oh. One minute. So my mm. own thing that I wanted to say, you know, patient, to be patient, we have to be an athlete. You know, we run in this race of patience and patience. There was one thing that I learned from being patient. I'm a kind of person, quick, I can snap. And then I sat down and remember. I remember my husband used to do some kind of habit, keep like talking, 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 talking. It never went through. And one day I was praying and God told me, he said, listen, you are the one that is not patient. The scripture he gave me was in Matthew 7, 5, where it tells us to remove the log from your eyes. 
Sometimes our eyes, what we hear, what we see can result to impatient. Mm. The things that somebody can come and say, hey, did you hear what they said about you? Did you, did you hear that kind of thing? That results to impatient. Did you see what they post? Did you see what they said about you? That is another form of impatient. So for us to exercise patience, we got to learn how to control our ears, what we hear and what we see. Mm. You know, when I prayed and he said, look, remove the log from your eyes. You are always seeing his fault. We always see the fault of others. Mm. We always see the mistakes of others. We never see our own part. You know, we all always say, hey, this is this, this, that, and that. But when you look at your own path, when you look at your own, he said, clear the log from your eyes. When I cleared it and I start seeing progress, I start seeing change. So for us to exercise patience, my own will be, we have to learn how to control our ears and our eyes. With that, that can help you. Our sister just mentioned that the folks, the friends, the other thing, the people, you know, I have a sister. Every time I'm running out of patience, I just call, hey, sit down. Somebody that can step on your brake, somebody that can tell you this step that you are taking, that's not a good, that's not a good step. So for us to exercise our patience, we have to learn our ears and our eyes. When we control that, we start seeing the flaws of others. When we control that, we start seeing the mistakes and problem. That's how we can control. That's how I learned to control my own. Okay, your volume suddenly ceased. But that's that was an amazing point controlling our ears and our eyes. Wow, that that's that's you know some of the things we go through now. This is all the really final, right? We just try to amplify things that are not looking for us. So let's ignore the ones that are not looking for us and focus on the things that matter. Thank you so much. This was an amazing one. I I know that maybe more people had contributions after the Zoom. I pity those who are on social media. After the Zoom, I know people usually sit back and give their contributions, but because we are trying, I know we have gone eight minutes above our time today. Thank you for your contributions, but let's just take 30 seconds. I want us to pray. You know, this is a prayer group. All of these things we are saying must be connected to the supernatural. All these things we have studied or we have learned today can never be possible without the help of the Holy Ghost. All of us are impatient at one point. You want to lift up your voice and say, Father, help me. They have le I've learned these things. Maybe one thing or the one that the Holy Spirit, you know, told you something while we're talking about the various people. We want to ask God, grace, grace for patience. We have heard that most importantly, when we are impatient, we are gone out. Wow. Wow. So you want to ask God, mercy, give me grace, grant me grace. Father, I want to thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. Father, this morning, we come individually with our hearts open up to you. I have heard your word. I have heard you have used these women to be a blessing to me this morning. Father, I am sorry for this. So many times I'm impatient. I'm sorry for this. So many times I've been so selfish and so self-centered. It's been all about me and not about people. I feel to act, to give, render an act of service to you humanity. I come before you this morning asking for mercy. Do not take account of my shortcomings. Do not take account of the mistakes of the past. I begin to apply for your grace this morning. I promise you, God, I want to have a relationship, a fellowship with the Holy Ghost that the Holy Spirit is going to help me in order to be patient, to grow in this battle. And I pray for each and every woman and individual listening to us this morning that that same grace be available in the life of each and every one. That the words we have heard this day will not just hear them, we will put them to practice. That Lord, as you'll be giving us tests, because they'll actually be in test. Some of us, as we are going to work, there's a test waiting for us. You will help us to pass the test. That the test of life, we are not going to fail it. The test of patience, Lord, we are not going to fail in the exams of life. In the name of Jesus, grant us discernment, grant us wisdom, grant us sensitivity to be able to know when we are writing an exam in the realm of the spirits and when we are not writing. Father, we submit ourselves to you. We pray 
pray that that grace be available. Give us that garment of patience that every day when we are home, when we leave the house, we we'll wear the garments and we'll be able to present you wherever we find ourselves. We give you glory for today. We thank you for the words we have heard. May these words bear fruit. May these words bear fruit that our children will see a change. Our spouses will see a change. Our family members will know we had an encounter with the world. We thank you for today because we know that only you would have done what you have done. Father, let your name be glorified. And as a fellowship, as a family, this morning we decree and we declare that this week is open in the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, and in the name of God the Holy Ghost. We decree that whatever thing we lay our hands this week, it shall prosper. We decree that the windows of heaven are open for us. And this week will not be a victim of casualties. This week we decree and declare we will not be a victim of misfortune, we will not be a victim of accident, we will not be a victim of pain. We cover this week with the precious blood of Jesus. We take authority over this week. We decree that God's counsel concerning our life will stand in the name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. How much I love the Facebook family. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You have a beautiful and amazing week. Please, 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 before we go, look out for those of us on social media. We will not be having fellowship next week, Monday. However, we have our second year anniversary on Sunday. We shall be broadcasting it live, and it's just like a whole fellowship, so there'll be word and everything. So look out for the video. We're going to be live, so that will be our Monday message for you. The Lord bless you, and we'll see you on Sunday. Bye.